Taking gorgeous photos and stunning video of your finished prop works can both be really fun, but also super important if you're gonna use those photos in your online portfolio or post them on social media, especially if you were trying to sell those things as products. Today, we're gonna to do some advanced techniques, show off some really cool gear, and show you how to take the coolest photos of your props and costumes. Hey there, fellow maker, you've got Bill in the shop today. We're talking prop photography. Still photos are one of my favorite hobbies. Nowadays, I do a lot of animal photography, a lot of birds. Uh, I've got some fun, awesome, cool lenses for that. I really enjoy doing that just for fun. I've been a photographer most of my life. My mom, now retired, she was a photography teacher, which meant before the age of 10, I was in the darkroom processing black and white photos, which is a ton of fun. Today, I really wanna dive in the world of more advanced techniques. We've done some beginner stuff in the past. Today, we're gonna to grab some cool gear that we've got, show them off, and also show you how we shoot both our um, thumbnail photos for all of our videos, as well as those moving beauty shots at the end of all of our prop builds. And then I also want to tackle just some standard uh, product photography that'll help anyone that's trying to sell stuff online, which is something that we do. First thing I definitely want to dive into is gear. My favorite topic, I've got a lot of it. Starting with, of course, my cell phone. Nowadays, I still take most of my beauty shots with this big expensive camera with a big expensive lens, but cell phone cameras are getting better and better. So I wanted to show off some of that. I just have one of the newer iPhones, it's got three lenses on there and it can do a ton that the big camera can do. So for example, it's got different lenses. I can zoom out to get a wide angle lens. I can zoom way in to get a more of a telephoto shot if I need it. That's just the standard app that comes on here with its portrait mode. This will uh, try and blur out the background, give you that low depth of field look. This works quite well struggles with cat whiskers I've found, but it does give you that fun blurry background look. You can also change the simulated f-stop over here. So if you want it to be a little less blurry or more, you've got some options, which I think is pretty cool and really slick. So that's an option nowadays and you can get, go really, really far with this. Of course, it does a lot of the same stuff for video, which I think is pretty cool. The other thing I really like about this is the macro. If I just go to the normal photo mode and I zo zoom in on something close, the camera can focus ridiculously close to things, like crazy, crazy close. It's about a centimeter away from the surface. So I'm really impressed. I can even see the layer lines inside that M. That's kind of bananas. So uh, your cell phone will give you the option to take very close up, very detailed photos of whatever it is you're making, which is really cool. So we'll show some examples of final shots with the cell phone, but I'm also gonna play with this big expensive camera and I wanna tell you about it. Of course, the main reason I like using a big fancy camera is you have a ton of options for lenses that can do lots of different things. I tend to keep my wide zoom on for most stuff. This is a 24 to 70 Sigma art lens. It's really terrific, takes great photos. This is what I use for almost all of my thumbnails. Now, it's also really expensive. Uh, if you really want to get into DSLR type photography, I recommend a 1.8 uh, 50 millimeter lens. This is the cheapest lens you can get and you can get some really gorgeous shots with this. We'll show some shots from this guy later. Uh, I also really like macro photography uh, and it's great for prop photography so you can get really close. So I have this 90 millimeter macro lens. Uh, the camera Brittany's using right now has a 60 millimeter macro that's very similar and really great for getting tight, tight shots of the details of your final work. Uh, I also am borrowing this probe lens from my friend Sophie and her husband Kim, and we'll show off some of that later. This is a, a special effects type lens. You may not wanna purchase, you may wanna just borrow or rent for those occasions when you need it. So how do you pick which lens to use? Well, like I said, the wide zoom covers most stuff. So why don't I show some of the things you can do with this guy. We've got this set up at the widest. This is 24 millimeters and it's pretty wide it's not like a fisheye but it's pretty wide and it does distort your uh proportions a little bit the thing you're shooting so in this case 
uh, close things look closer, further away things look further away. That's not necessarily my favorite for props. I like to punch in. So if I zoom into 70 millimeters, we compress the frame a little bit. And I prefer that look a little more for my prop photos. And you can see that it makes a really big difference in the way your final product will end up feeling. So that's the main difference between a wide or a telephoto lens. And I'd probably aim for something over 50 millimeter. Let me show you that 50 millimeter lens, in fact. Again, this is the cheapest lens I own. I think this was 200 bucks brand new. You can probably get them cheaper used. And there we go. That's the way that 50 millimeter looks. And that's pretty terrific. Nearly every video I shot for like seven years, I shot with this lens. This 50 millimeter lens. It's a workhorse and it's really cheap, so I love using it. This is my macro lens, and a macro lens lets you get really close to your subject and still be in focus. Uh, I really dig this thing for getting the details on my props, and you can see I can just get closer and closer and closer and almost that close. So I can get about maybe six or seven inches away and have everything still be in focus, which is really, really cool. Now this is pretty close, but that probe lens that I'm borrowing, that thing gets crazy close. This probe lens, on the other hand, can get millimeters away from the subject and still kind of be in focus. Look at that, that's crazy. So that's a main difference between this probe lens and a normal macro lens, but it's got some other tricks up its sleeve. Because this lens is so long and narrow, you can get it into places you can't get a normal lens, which means you can do some cool special effects type things. So on this one, I actually set up a slider and ran the lens backwards out the trigger well to get a really fun reveal that you couldn't get any other way. It's pretty bananas. There's a ton of other neat special effects type stuff you can get with this lens, and I've honestly only just now started to unlock its potential. Uh, so if you're looking to do something special with your photo or video, look for fancy, neat lenses that do something cool and see if you can borrow or rent one. They tend to be really expensive, uh, but lens rentals can be done over the internet. I've done it before. It's a really handy way to try out a lens before you dump a ton of money on it. The next bit of gear is lights, and light is everything. Cameras capture light. We want to control all the light. We have a bunch of options. Nothing too fancy here. Got some LED panels that we use. This is just for working on prop stuff. We have a couple of other similar panels that are uh, have soft boxes that are pointing at me right now. Those get used for all our photography. Uh, but there are tons and tons of LED panel lights. These are really old ones. There's newer, fancy ones that have RGB and everything in them that you can find on Amazon. These things are so useful. I especially like having small-ish ones that I can like put somewhere separately that are battery operated. Uh, but we still do a ton of stuff with these can lights. These are just from the hardware store. I have probably a dozen or so of these kicking around the house. Just have an LED bulb in there like that. And then we can use our other piece of tech, light gels. So these are specifically designed to not melt when they're, they get warm and they can add color to everything that you do. This is one of my favorite ways of sort of zhuzhing up my prop photo shoot. Add some colored gels in the background, maybe a little colored rim light. Blue, red, we can make me look pink. Cyberpunk is a lot of fun. The next bit of gear are these light stands. You could get C stands, anything to help you hold stuff off the ground. These can hold lights, obviously, but I also like using them for holding backdrops. And I got this, this is just a paper printed backdrop of some wood panels. I think this was at Joann's for very cheap. They make vinyl versions of this now that are a little more permanent. Um, you'll see ads for them on Instagram. Uh, they're pretty great. And I can just clamp those to a piece of wood here on my light stand and turn this into, whoop, turn this into a really quick backdrop. It basically transforms the background into something a little more desirable. Now I use the backdrop of my studio for my photos all the time because it looks cool, but especially if you're doing product photography, you might want to do something like this to just totally change the scene. There we go, let's put a prop in front of this thing. 
So there is our prop with a completely different background and it just changes everything. I've got a brick one of those so I can literally change it to brick in just about a minute and it really helps set everything apart. What we're really trying to do is separate our subject here from the background. And this does it really well. The last bit of this puzzle is some set pieces. You can adorn your set with some really neat things to make it look a little bit more interesting. So got the mask here. I want to do something kind of cool and rustic that matches it. And I happen to have this box over here. It's full of my Ghostbusters stuff. Uh, but it's this old box I found at a secondhand store with cool markings on it. And it really helps set off some of the more rustic looking props. I'll even use that as the base so I don't get my cutting mat in the shot to uh, make my shot look even more interesting. Uh, other things, you could set up more props, for example, a candle. If you've got like a fantasy prop, it's really great having a flickering candle kind of in the background. Those are some fun shots. Uh, and then another fun special effect that I like that adds a lot is of course fog. And I've got this little micro fogger here that just dumps out haze. Uh, it looks really cool. It's a fun special effect, but the other thing this does is it creates haze in your background and it helps separate your subject from the background a little bit more. So we'll use this in a shot later and it'll look really, really cool. Also looks cool in slow motion. It also smells like a roller rink in here. The last thing I want to talk about before we start snapping photos are your camera settings. You can change the shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and even frame rate for your videos. And that'll have a dramatic result on your final uh, product. The good news is you can experiment to your heart's content, but there are also a ton of other videos out there on YouTube that'll dive deep into those settings for you. What I tend to do is just make sure I'm shooting fast enough, so a fast enough shutter speed that I'm not getting any blurry photos. For a 70 millimeter lens here, that means uh, one one hundredth of a second or faster, probably a little faster would be even better. Uh, and then add an aperture that makes a really pretty photo. If you want more blur, go lower. If you want less, go higher. Uh, and that's mostly it for the settings. Uh, the last thing for video is, like I said, you can change the frame rate. So normally we shoot at 30 frames per second. Sometimes we shoot at 60 frames per second so that we can slow it down by half, make it more dramatic. And some of these uh, cameras can shoot even higher than that. So if you want some really dramatic slow-mo, you can shoot that as well. I think the camera Brit's holding right now will do 240 frames per second, which is pretty slow. Just make sure you have tons of light. All right, let's gather our stuff and put together a shot. First thing, we got to pick our subject. We're going to take some nice photo and video of our pit boy This thing has lights. We want to make sure those are featured. And I'm going to set it on this cool rustic looking piece of wood that I had before. Uh, and we'll rotate and sort of pose this as we go, as we start taking photos, figuring out what we want. Uh, but the next step is going to be to set up the background. Now I like what's going on back here, but I don't want it to be the star. Uh, I may even turn off some of these lights. Or I think what I'm probably going to do is put some gels on another light and hit this with some nice color as sort of our backdrop. We'll make it maybe blue, something cold. And then when I like this, I'll use something warm like red so we get some nice contrast. So let's set up some lights on the backdrop. I've got just one of my portable LED lights here and we're going to grab our gels, which are right there. And we'll grab, uh, let's do purple. Purple sounds cool. And that'll light our background quite a bit different. I've got this gaff tape here. So I can just tape the gel right to the light like that. And then I can pose this up and down wherever it needs to go. These are kind of competing. So I'm going to turn those off and I'm going to be shooting a little lower. So I'm going to lower this down. That's pretty good. I might set up a second one just to get a little more color. All right. We've got two lights set up on the backdrop, a blue and a purple to make this a little different than the foreground. You can see in the camera where we're rolling the difference that just a little bit of light makes, but we're going to do a little bit more with some other lights. So I've got these two soft boxes and I want to put one almost directly above. In fact, I can just show you. One of my favorite things to do is to get 
a light directly above the subject like that. It makes really dramatic shadows, makes for great thumbnails. And this isn't colored, so it helps, again, separate it from the background. In fact, if I look at my camera here, I can even sort of direct it there. I can bump the exposure settings if I really feel like I can get them a little better there. But you can see the background is blue and that sets it apart from the bright subject here. I can also use a pair of lights here since I don't have a way to fly this over. So we're gonna do this as, we'll eventually put a color on that, but we'll use the other one as sort of the, the key light that hits everything. There we go. And I also have that big screen on there, so I need to contend with the reflection. So I may end up rotating stuff. But let's put a warm gel on this guy. Got a red gel, super, super warm. And I'm gonna move this light a little bit. And the whole time I'll, end up, I'll go looking at my screen and see what the result looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. That really helps set everything apart. Now, the last step here, where's my toy? The last step is fog. Like I said, this will be hazy back here. I don't need the fog on my subject, but we're gonna dump a bunch back here. And again, it'll help separate the background, create that nice contrast. And that looks pretty cool. In fact, I think I went a little high with that. Let's do, go lower. So the fog will wanna go up. <laughs> it's just everywhere now. And I found with fog, you're kind of at its mercy. You've got to work with it until you get the shot that you really want. That's just covering everything. There we go. So there, yeah, a little bit of haze in the background. Again, it helps separate the backdrop from the subject. And that's pretty cool. So at this point, I have all of my elements set up and I'm just gonna start tweaking them. Maybe try different colors, um, put the fog in different places, take lots of photos. Memory is basically free. If it's a bad photo, you can just delete it and take another one. And then of course, take lots of footage, lots of video footage. Like I said, we tend to shoot this stuff at 60 frames per second so that we can slow it down by half and it looks ultra dramatic. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's how we make our thumbnails and uh, we do all our beauty shots for all of our prop videos. It's mostly this setup and all of these elements just get rearranged or changed a little bit. Sometimes I'll hang something in the background here to again, separate the backdrop from everything else. But the most, for the most part, if you look at all of our thumbnails, they look a lot like this. So that last setup was for like our artsy fartsy thumbnail photos and everything, but I wanna show you how to do a really fun and basic product photo. I've got our same uh, printed backdrop here, but I'm going to hang it up backwards and just use the white sheet of it. And then it's going to roll down onto my work surface here. And it'll be the, the bottom floor as well for my photos. There we go. And that can just roll out like that. So now we have like this perfect white uh, cloud backdrop for all of our photos. Got my product here, this helmet. It's gonna go there. My lights are really basic. I have two soft boxes. I just wanna make sure I see my product really, really well. I do wanna get a little artsy though. To add a little bit more something going on here, we wanna put light, colored light on this backdrop. So I have this can light with a blue gel pointing over there. I've also got another one over here that I can point at this side. And we just want this to mostly hit the backdrop. Now my white lights were drowning this out a little bit so I can I've turned them down. I've also moved them away from the subject so that we now have this nice bit of blue splash on the back that makes this just a little bit more interesting. But as far as a product photo goes, this is really great. It highlights the model. You can take photos from this angle. You could rotate it, Oop. snap another photo show the inside of it, whatever you have to do. But this shot really conveys the star of the show, which is your model. Uh, and this is just done with a handful of lights and a piece of paper. We do this kind of stuff for our prop and costume making all the time. Obviously we make prop videos, so 
we have reasons to be shooting photos of all of our finished works. But of course we have products over at punishprops.com. We shoot product photography all the time. Uh, and we have something new, something over at printables.com slash at gizmo thrill. It's our new 3D printing venture. These are some 3D printable model kits that we've got out now. We have a membership over there if you wanna join and get new models every single month. Brittany and I are both professional 3D modelers and we've been designing some fun kits for you to print and put together. Uh, we've got Scooter the Tugboat. That's our free model. If you wanna go print that right now, you can go download it and have fun. Uh, and then Brittany designed some really adorable desktop dragons and these incredibly cool treasure chests. All of these are models that you can assemble and play with after the fact. I even designed a working novelty padlock. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, so anyway, we just launched our page over on printables. We'll have more fanfare and more details about this uh, as time goes on as we build out our collection of models. Uh, but you can go check it out right now. Again, we'll have a link down below if you want to become a member or check out our store and potentially buy some of these models to put together for yourself. We're super proud of these. We've been working on it for months. And we're really happy to get it out the door. Uh, so please go check that out. If you got a 3D printer for Christmas, you're looking for stuff to print, these things will keep you busy for a while. Uh, that'll wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed our look at some more advanced photography for your prop making. Hopefully it helps you out. If you've shot some cool photos of your props, please send them my way. I'm at Chimbeard on Twitter. And yes, I still call it that. <laughs> uh, thanks again to the members of our Extra Credit Club. They're the fine human beings who keep us employed over here. We've got patreon.com slash punish props. If you want to go check that out, become a member help support what we do. I uh, appreciate you hanging out with me in the shop today. Hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, and I know I had an awful lot of fun. That'll wrap it up. Thanks from the shop to yours. And we'll see you next time. Happy crafting. It smells like a roller rink in here. Ha, 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 ha.